an imploding tanker car. How could this happen? Tanker cars are giant, 70 feet long, 15 feet high, thick steel casing meant to contain things like fuel, even in case of a derailment. How could something like that spontaneously implode and crush itself? Well, if it did in fact happen, it had to do with pressure and pressure differential. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me show you with this metal can. If I take this thin metal can and seal it and then hook a vacuum pump up to it and start pumping air out, we understand what will happen. It will crush itself. Whoops. But how could something like that happen without the action of an outside vacuum pump? Well, let me show you. Now I'm about to perform a critical action in this experiment, and that is to take a little bit of the hot water and pour it into the can because in the original myth, the tanker car had been steam cleaned inside and out. Now I'm about to initiate an implosion. First thing I do is cap the can. Now fully capped, this vessel was full of steam and air that was heated to its boiling point. Now that air is rapidly cooling. As it's cooling, they're creating a negative pressure inside the can. Yep, and that's the whole ball game. A difference in pressure. Filling the container with steam pushes out the air. But if the vessel is sealed while it's still hot and then allowed to cool, the steam condenses and the internal pressure drops, meaning the now much greater external pressure pushes in on the surface. And that's bad news for the can. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, it's actively moving. Look at that. <laughs> I'm doing this with my mind. In case you were wondering, this is all telekinesis. <laughs> mind games aside, the scientific principle is clearly sound. Now, it's just a question of scale. We're going to ramp things up quite a bit to this 55-gallon drum which not only has steel walls that are many times thicker, but also structurally it's much stronger because it's round and it's got these ribs. So it'll present much more of a challenge. All right, now we just wait for it to boil. For this first test, we're just gonna heat the water up until it's boiling vigorously. Then we'll seal it up, turn off the heat, let it cool, stand back and see what happens. Sealing it up. There we go. <sighs> now that it's sealed, a pressure differential can develop, and the wait begins for the steam to cool and condense. That kind of makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> if this sturdy steel barrel collapses, confidence will be high that the full-scale tank car can also crumple. <laughs> How long did it take the little cans to crush? Those crushed very, very quickly. I'd imagine they're not structurally near as strong. No. I think it's going to be one big catastrophic kind of funk. It's going to sound like hitting it with a baseball bat. Boom! Oh. <laughs> What's really cool about this is we heard a couple of bings and bunks at the beginning. <laughs> this is killing me. But right now, this thing hasn't made any noise in 15 minutes. But what I know is happening inside there is that it's cooling and that steam is reverting back to water and it's creating low pressure in there, which is pulling the sides in. They're resisting that because of their structural integrity, but at a certain point, I expect the outside casing to fail, and it should be uh, pretty spectacular. Next time we hold the camera up with Mag. Oh! There you go. Wow! You can feel that. Woo! That was so cool! <laughs> I could feel that in my chest. Yeah, which well, I'm is not weird. sure if that's just my heart leaping out of my throat because of the. That was amazing.